Welcome to STAT 212. My name is Kelly, and I'm a teaching assistant professor here at the University of Illinois. Um, I've been here since August 2019. Um, this is my favorite course to teach, so far at least. Um, I really enjoy teaching statistics to non-majors, and I enjoy kind of learning a little bit more about different disciplines. So I don't really have a biology background, but I've learned a lot um, just kind of by teaching the course and um, reading uh, research articles and things. I'm looking for kind of interesting data and context to use. So I think it's a lot of fun to um, kind of use statistics, but to think a little bit within a different discipline with it. Um, so there's a couple um, or two members of our team that I'll also introduce you to, and those are uh, my two cats. Uh, so one of them is Hallow. Um, Hallow I've had since I uh, moved here. I adopted him um, a few weeks after I moved. So he's been um, kind of a nice companion to have. Um, he's uh, um, a little chunky. Um, we've been trying to get him to lose some weight, but um, he hasn't really lost any weight, honestly. Um, but he's a very easygoing cat. Um, and then Truffles is um, not as easygoing, honestly. She's a, uh, she has a lot of anxiety issues, um, but she is still um, fun to have around. Um, I adopted her in, I guess it was June 2020, um, and she's... Um, she, she talks a lot, quite honestly, um, but she's, um, yeah, she's always an interesting to observe. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about um, some of the elements of the course, um, just starting with the fact that the course is taken out of 1,000 points. So that means that um, since a 93% corresponds to an A, um, that you would need 930 points at the end of the semester to um, earn an A. Um, you can also kind of calculate your grade as you go. So um, if you look at um, Compass, you can see how many points you have divided by how many post points total have been graded or posted so far, and that would give you a sense of your kind of your running total. Um, assuming that any missed homeworks or anything like that have zeros in them, so you know sometimes it takes me a, a week or two to kind of input zeros for, for missing assignments for stuff. Um, but assuming that's all filled in, then your running total should help you kind of calculate your, your grade so far. Um, one other thing that I'll mention is that um, at the end of the semester, I don't round grades because I just kind of view them already as points. Um, it's also like a, a pretty high grade distribution course as it is. So unless something just goes wrong or, you know, exams are just, for whatever reason, a lot harder one particular semester than another, um, um, the grades are going to be what they are. So if you if you want an A, then you need 930 points at the end of the semester. If you have 929, I'm very sorry. I'm telling you right now, that is an A minus. Um, so don't email me at the end of the semester and ask me to round your 929 to a 930. It doesn't work that way. I want my grade um, distribution to be super transparent. So everyone knows what you need the whole time. Um, so I'll just mention that now, but it will come up again later, I'm sure. This is also a 15-week course. It's divided into um, units of three weeks each, um, and each unit has largely the same assignment structure. So um, I'll talk about these each in more detail. But this general um, kind of schedule of three weeks is going to really look the same um, um, from each three-week period to three-week period. Um, so the first thing that I'll mention are homework questionnaires. These are on Compass. And they're um, unlimited attempts um, with your highest grade counting. So you can take them as many times as you want until you're happy with your grade. Um, the questions don't change on these. So it's, it's literally just going to be the same questions with the same answers each time. Um, these are going to be due initially Friday at 6 of the week that they correspond with. So um, homework 1 goes with chapter 1. Homework 2 goes with chapter 2. Homework 3 goes with chapter 3, etc. Um, so it kind of encourages you to keep up with the content each week. I don't really care what day you necessarily watch your videos or read, um, as long as um, you try to complete the homework um, by the end of that week. And there is feedback as well on these, so I'd encourage you to read that as you go. Even the correct feedback is helpful if you're not completely sure why the answer is what it is. Um, you know, you should read that. Um, the total homework comes out to 25 points per unit, which is going to be 125 points total for the entire semester. Um, one other thing that I'll mention is that I do reopen the first two homeworks on Tuesday night of the third week. 
So in other words, um, the, the couple days before the exam, you can retake those homeworks again and kind of use them as a review. And you can also use them if you just missed them earlier in the semester, or not semester, but earlier in the unit. So, so for example, if you don't do homework one, or maybe you didn't get a perfect score on homework one, you can still do it again those last couple days before the exam. But they do all close for a final time at 6 p.m. of week three. So once that deadline hits, you cannot complete homeworks for credit anymore in that unit. All right, so pre-labs and labs are going to be covering any software content for that particular unit. So for the first unit, that's most, mostly going to be Excel. Um, and for the rest of the units is going to be um, RStudio. So the pre-lab is just like the homework where it's unlimited attempts with your highest grade counting. And it's going to be um, just kind of like this questionnaire style, most most all of it is going to be multiple choice type questions. The lab is going to be a more open-ended assignment where you're actually going to be doing a little bit more, like working with the data set, and you're going to be um, you know, making graphs or running some basic analysis using the software material for that unit. Um, all right, so I'll keep going here. Um, unit reports are going to be um, week three on Wednesday at 6 p.m., um, unit reports are going to vary a lot in what they do. Some of them are going to be more software related. Some of them are going to be more like an article exploration or something like that. Um, but they're going to be weighted a little bit more and they're going to be due kind of towards the end of the unit. Um, I'm realizing now as I'm going through, I didn't update the PowerPoint about um, lateness. So, so one thing that I'll mention about both the lab reports and the unit reports um, so not the homeworks or the pre-labs. The homeworks and pre-labs, you got to do them by the final deadline. But, but labs and unit reports, you can turn them in late with a 5% penalty for each 24-hour period late, as many as seven days. Um, so I'll kind of clarify that again. Um, so if, if an assignment is worth, unit report's worth 40, 40 points, then if you submit it anywhere between one minute and 24 hours late, you're going to lose 5% of 40 points. So you're going to you're going to lose two points off the top. So it's not going to be a percent off of your earned grade. It's going to be a percent off of the total worth. So, so if you complete, say, a unit report between one minute and 24 hours late, that's going to be two points off. If it's between 24 and 48 hours late, that's going to be four points, et cetera, up to a maximum of seven days late. So you can't turn these in more than seven days late because that's when we finished grading them. That's when we compile it to Compass, so we're not going to accept any after that date unless you have some kind of extenuating circumstance that you've let me know about well ahead of time. Um, but yeah, so that's just a, a small change from what's on the PowerPoint there where it says 10%. Now it's going to be 5% for up to seven days. All right, and then lastly are exams. So exams are going to be 100 points, and they're going to be... Um, uh, or for, for exams one through four, they're going to be weighted 100 points. And exam five is going to be 150 points. So these, this, th these exams are going to cover material from the book, but not the software-specific things. So nothing from the software notes, nothing specifically from like the pre-lab questionnaires. Um, it's only going to be covering software if it's in like the actual chapter, which is going to be basically no software at all. Um, so you don't really need to study like our coding for the exams. You should study really the homework questionnaires are going to look the most like the, the exams. Um, these are open notes, open book, um, open internet even, um, while you're working on these, but you can't work with other people. So you can't, um, uh, text other people. You can't direct message other people. You can't, you know, get help from somebody on the internet necessarily. Um, everything has to really be your own, um, your own work while you're working on the exam. Um, so it's going to be taking place as well from 3 o'clock to 4.20 on Fridays would be the regular time that the exam is available. Um, so everyone's expected to take it during that time. However, um, I do offer some conflict times if you have either a class or if you're in a different time zone outside the United States or some other um, like documentable conflict that you can, you know, tell me about or show me, um, you, you can let me know. Um, so again, another PowerPoint error. I think I have a bullet point here that says exams are scheduled from 8.50 to 10 p.m. That is, that is fake news. 
that is not true. It's um, what I have down here. This is the one that's true. This is not true. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the time that you're expected to take it. However, um, there's a link on Compass where you can fill out a Google form and request a conflict time if needed. Um, it is going to be open 75 minutes. Um, I have an 80 minute window here um, just so that you have five minutes to get into the exam and start, you know, just that there's some cushion time. Um, but you will have 75 minutes from the time you open the exam until you finish. If you have a DREZ accommodation that gives you more time, then your time starts at three and just goes to however much time um, you have on your DREZ accommodation letter. There is some extra credit in the class um, in different places. Some of them are kind of these standalone um, like assignments. Um, other times you're just going to be like extra credit questions and say like the lab report or something for a particular week. Um, and so you can get, there'll be well over 20 points of extra credit um, available in the course to kind of pad your grade. Um, as well, I'll mention that the exams um, will always have at least one extra credit question, but that's just going to be only to pad your exam score. So usually what I'll do is there, there might be like 102 or 103 points on the exam, but then the exam is counted out of 100 and your maximum score on the exam is 100. So I'll mention that too, that you, have a, you always have a little bit of cushion room on the exam. I usually just do that more because I realize that there's probably gonna be at least one kind of bad question on the exam that maybe it's tricky or it's worded confusingly. So just in case there's a bad exam question, there's that always an extra question on the exam for some cushion room in your score. Um, all right. Um, okay, so right now, I'd encourage you to pause the video and I want you to go back to um, the, the, I guess it would be the week one page and I want you to complete the general survey to collect uh, class data if you haven't done so already. Um, there's also going to be another survey listed under that as well um, that I encourage you to complete if you haven't done so already. And optional, um, you might want to complete the introduction discussion board. So there's a discussion board where you can introduce yourself and everyone will get one point of extra credit um, who fills out a post on there. So feel free to pause the video and do those three things right now if you haven't done them already. Um, also on here, um, you may not have your course notebook. If you, if you haven't, you should order it. I'll mention that in just a second. But um, I'd also encourage you to pause the video and think about these three questions. Um, and please save this as well. So either put it directly in your book if you have a copy or write it down somewhere and save it with your stuff if you can, either in a Word document or on a piece of paper and save this for the end of the semester because we might return to it for an extra credit towards the end of the semester. Um, so yeah, I would encourage you to pause the video and think through and answer these three questions. All right, and so that will wrap up our video. Um, if you have not already purchased a course packet, please do so. You can order a digital copy or you can order a hard copy um, if you would prefer to do that. I think the digital copy is nice if you have like a tablet that you can write on um, or something like that. Um, I think the hard copy is better if you don't have that option because there will be some writing, it won't be a ton, um, but I think you're gonna get a lot more out of the course if you are able to write on your, on your notes. Um, you might also just wanna explore the course website a little bit. Um, feel free to try homework one. Again, they're unlimited attempts, so there's no harm in opening it and trying it. Um, if you just wanna get a sense of what you know these look like and what kinds of questions you're gonna see on there. Um, and I'd also encourage you to skim the syllabus. Um, so whatever, there's a few, obviously I've only mentioned a few highlights here in the video, um, but the syllabus is there for any other information that you might wanna know. So you might just wanna open it and see what's in there and read anything that you think is relevant, including you know, more about late policies, my tips to doing well, things like that. Email me anytime if you have any questions. Um, feel free to stop by, by Zoom office hours if you just wanna say hello and introduce yourself. Um, but other than that, um, that, that concludes the video. And we just have to stop it here. There we go, bye.